Hi everyone, it's Benitez here. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's WTF episode, I'm going to share with you all five tips and tricks that you can do with Power Automate Cloud Flows. For the agenda, I will briefly talk about what these five tips and tricks are before we jump straight into the demo. Last week, I presented at the Business Applications Dynamics 365 Power Platform User Group, and these are the five tips and tricks that I had shared. Number one is all about naming your connection references. By default, it is going to use the name of the connector, but I'm going to share with you all how you can name it. For number two, it's all about creating a header and being able to insert a space for that header in the create HTML table action. Number three is about sharing Peter's method when you want to use the apply to each and use the values extracted from the apply to each action. So typically what we normally use is an initialized variable action outside of the apply to each. And then within the apply to each, we normally use an append to array variable, but over on the right hand side is Peter's method where he doesn't use any variables at all. Number four is about creating a custom date and time format from a date and time column or field. So in here, I'm pulling through a value from Microsoft Databurse, and I'm going to show you how you can create it in your own format that you want. Number five is all about using the Dataverse trigger condition. I did talk about this in my last WTF episode, but in today's WTF episode, the use case is slightly different where we only want the case, sorry, we only want the Power Automate Cloudflow to be triggered if the customer associated to the case is an account or an organization. So this is normally used when you are an organization that is dealing with high priority customers and you want a notification to be sent to, let's say, um, a particular channel in Teams or to an email distribution list. And so this is what I'm gonna share with you all today. So without further ado, let's jump straight into the demo. For tip number one, I am going to share how you can create a name for your connection reference. As you can see, we have multiple connections that are simply using the default name of the connector. So just to give you an example, I'm going to create a new connection from Microsoft Dataverse. And I'm going to show you that it's going to create it in a way where it's going to show the default value of the connector. Sorry, let me just refresh and show you that. So just bear with me for a second. And there you go. So one of these is the one that I had just created. So if you want it, if you want to give it a particular name, then the tip is head over to your make.parapps.com site go over to new, select a new connection reference, and then as you can see, it asks you for a name for your connection reference. I'm going to call this WTF integration user. And then here is where you can select your connector. So I'm going to scroll all the way down and select Microsoft Dataverse. And then I'm going to click create. And voila, that has created my named connection reference. Let's head back to the Cloudflow and refresh. And now what will happen is that we can see our named connection reference against any of the Microsoft Dataverse connect actions. Ta-da! So here it is, WTF integration users. So that is tip number one. Tip number two is about inserting a space in the header of the create HTML table. So if I just delete this, and if I type in case, and then if I try to do a space, so this is me entering the space bar, if you can hear that, it's not giving me a space. So I found out about this tip in a community forum post in the Power Automate site. And the tip was to simply enter your header in Notepad with a space, and then copy and paste that into the action. So it's a very simple hack and it works. So there you go, that was tip number two. All right, so tip number three is about Peter's method when you are wanting to grab the values 
from a list of rows or an array and you're using the apply to each. So as I mentioned, outside of the apply to each, normally we have an initialized variable where the type is array. So in this scenario, I'm grabbing the full name of the owner that's associated to the case so that we can go and notify someone that these are the owners of these high priority cases for this particular customer. Okay, and then in the apply to each is where we use the append to array variable action. So what this is doing is that it's looping through all of the cases that meet the criteria up here in the Microsoft Dataverse list rows action, and then it's gonna add them back to this variable. So then we can only see, you know, like Adele, Bianca, Cassie, all of that um, as an array. And then when you want to use those values, um, I've got a compose action outside of the apply to each to just to demonstrate are those values that it has retrieved from the list rows action. And yeah, so if I go ahead and run this cloud flow, we'll see the cloud flow in action and it does work. And this is if we're using variables. So as you can see in here, it has gone through each of the cases. So this tells me that there were eight and it's gone and grabbed the values it's appended it to the array up here, and then this is what it would look like if we were to use it. So I can see Bianca, Adele, and Mod Administrator. So this method works fine. However, if you don't wanna use variables, Peter's method is very cool. So he blogged a about this, and I'll share it in the YouTube description as well as in my blog post. So the difference with Peter's method is that he is simply using a compose action. So I'm gonna share with, I'm gonna go through this right now. So in the apply to each, he's got a compose action where he's, simply, where he's simply referencing the value that he needs. So in my case, it's a full name. And what you need to do is have a compose action and we just need to grab the expression that belongs to this output. So it's very simple. So now if I go into PE code, I can then just copy and paste this because this is the output of this particular compose action. So we don't really need this. We only use this compose action just to grab the expression. And then in here, we can dump that expression in. So now if I paste that in, I click OK, and then we go and run this. So if I just use this with a recently used run history, I'll show you what this looks like. Okay, so in the compose action, we can see that it has looped through all of those eight records and correctly retrieved the full name of the owner of all eight records. So the bonus tip that I'm gonna share with you next is, okay, well, that's nice. I can see that there are three distinct owners associated to these cases, Bianca, Adele, and the mod administrator user. So I don't really wanna see multiple name values of the same owner each time. I want to be able to just see the distinct values. So there are two expressions, sorry, two functions that you can use from Power Automate Cloud Flows. The first one is union. So this will grab all of the items um, that are of equal value from um, the uh, array that you have. And then we also have another function that we can use called join. And what I really like about the join function is that it pretty much grabs all of the values from the array, puts it into a string. You can specify how you wanna separate the values. So if it's by a comma, and then it just knows that for the very last value, so in my scenario, it would be mod administrator, it knows that it doesn't need to put a comma at, at the end. So in this example, you can see that it's saying separate it by a dot, so a dot b dot. But as you can see with the very last value, there is no dot. And that's one of the cool things that I like about the join function. So the expression that we're going to be using is this one here. So this is basically grabbing the output of the compose action within the apply to each. And we're using the union so that it's only going to grab us the distinct values rather than list all eight full name um, values from the owner associated to the case. 
and then the join is simply going to join all of those distinct values with a comma and a space but it's not going to be included after the very last value. So let's go ahead and copy and paste this back into the flow expression. And we're going to rerun the flow so that I can show you how the two functions work. And that is pretty much the bonus tip that I wanted to share as part of tip number three, not two, three. Okay, so in a few seconds, we are going to see the tip, the bonus tip applied where we are using the join and the union functions. Ta-da! Easy as one, two, three. Okay, so for tip number four and five, it's all about setting the custom date and time format to whatever desired format you want, and then using the trigger condition so that the Cloudflower will only trigger based on whatever you have specified. So the Power Automate product team recently provided an updated guide on how you can apply custom date and time formats. So in this example, in this very first one, it's talking about the D format specifier for day. So this is only ever going to show a single digit if, you're, if your day is from, um, you know, like July 1 to July 9. But if you want to show a leading zero, then that's where you would use DD. So in other words, if it's from July 1 to July 9, you'd see 01 and then 02 and, and so forth. And all of the documentation in this um, guide goes into detail of what these different format specifiers are. So the one that I'm using today for my notification that is sent to Teams is this format. So DDD means it will give me the first three letters of the day for the date. MMM means it will give me the first three letters of the month. And then the DDD, sorry, the DD is the, um, the, the day of the date, but with a leading zero. So if it's one to nine, then it will show as 01 and 09 and so forth. And then we've got the hours and minutes and the TT is all about showing whether it's a.m. or p.m., which is very useful when you're dealing with date and time. Okay, so you might have noticed that this expression is kind of long. If you were to just use the created on date and time value, it's going to display as UTC, which may not make sense in the time zone that you're in, and that's because Microsoft Dataverse stores date and time in UTC like any other application or system out there. So what I'm doing is using the convert from UTC function, and then I'm saying I want to convert the UTC created on value to the value of New Zealand Standard Time. Now, if you do live in a country where you've got multiple time zones, such as Australia, then you have a couple of options where you can either grab the time zone of the user through Office 365. So this is useful if it is for, you know, like an internal use case. If it's, a, if it's an external use case, and if you happen to have the address information of the contact or the account, you can also work out the time zone of that account or that contact. I will share these two WTF episodes where I cover both scenarios in my blog post. So make sure you go ahead and check out my blog post. Okay, that, so that was tip number four. Now with tip number five, it is talking about the trigger conditions. So I covered this in my last WTF episode, but the use case in this WTF episode is all about triggering this cloud flow only if the case is associated to a customer where the customer is an account. We don't want this to trigger if it is a contact associated to the case. And in every trigger that you work with in Microsoft Dataverse, as well as in cloud flows, there's usually going to be a body, so an output for the trigger. So in here, if we have a look at the trigger, which in this scenario is when a case is created, we can see some values returned. And the one that we want to work with is this value, customer ID underscore type. So this is the customer lookup column in the case table 
where it will either be an account or a contact. So we only ever want this Cloudflow to trigger if it's an account. So all you need to do is just copy and paste this value into your expression. So if I head over back to the Cloudflow and we have a look at this expression, this is saying only trigger if the customer ID type ID type equals accounts for my trigger. Now, if you want to use more than one expression, so let's say and or in your condition expression, I do have a WTF episode on this. So again, I will link that in my blog post. So make sure you check out my blog post for this. And yeah, without further ado, let us run this Cloudflow and we'll see it in action. Oh, sorry. Backtrack. <laughs> we don't want to do that. What we want to do is head over to Dataverse and open up the customer service hub and let's create a couple of new cases. So the first one that I'm going to create is for a contact just to demonstrate that this Cloudflow isn't going to, to run. So let's say um, toilet paper needed in a ladies room. Okay, so then if I select a contact and we'll go ahead and select Adrian, we'll save and close. And then what I'll do next is create a new case where the customer equals account. So let's do that next. So now if I select new and let's say, oops, sorry, let's say there's a power outage for an entire building and let me select a customer. So I'll just go with a datum and we'll click save and close. Okay, so what I'll do next is head over to my run history for this Cloudflow and we should see that only one run history has been executed and that is because this Cloudflow run history would be associated to the one where we created a case against the customer. So just to show you what it looks like. So again, this is the one that I created against the account. And then if we have a look at my teams, we'll be able to see the custom date and time format. And that's it. Those are my five tips and tricks that you can do with Power Automate Cloud Flows. I hope you learned something new. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I will see you in the next WTF episode. Bye. Turn up. Let's go. Let's go.